Hello everyone. So this is GS Mains Paper Three, October 2017, Part Six, and this is the last part. After that, we'll move on to GS Mains Paper One, October, and then GS Mains Paper Two, November, right? Because November is ending now. Fine. So let's start. So we have done up until 27 topics in GS Mains Paper Three, October 2017. So the 28th topic is why privatization of PSB is not a solution, right? And this is under topic one, Indian economy, and topic three, government budgeting, right? So the thing is, sometimes people feel na, or people argue. You must, you, you, you people also in your group must have argued that all these government exchequer money should not be given to these banks who are faulting, right? Who are defaulting and who have so much stressed asset, right? But the thing is, in, and then we talk about privatization of PSBs, but privatization of PSB is not a solution. Why? We'll talk about it. So let's talk about this particular issue. So some feel that solution of repeated bailouts of PSBs, that is public se sector bank, is privatization. But the thing is, they these people who talk about this thing, they couldn't be more wrong because overwhelming majority of bank systems worldwide are privately owned, and yet these systems are prone to periodic bouts of bank failures. So majority, overwhelming majority, not only majority, over, overwhelming majority of bank system around the world are privately owned. Still, they fail. So it's not like if you do privatization, they will not fail, right? But still, there are some too big to fail uh, banks, right? Too big to fail banks, right? What are those banks in our country? One is SBI and other is ICICI. ICICI is privately owned, but SBI is public sector bank, right? The thing is, no, this was one thing. Uh, why privatization is not a solution. The second thing is. Median cost of bank recapitalization in these crises was 6.8 percent of GDP worldwide, right? And India's cost of recapitalization over a 20-year period is less than 1 percent of average GDP during this period worldwide. So it's like we, whatever money other countries or the whole world is putting, say, is putting in, putting say, in these crises, right? It is around 6 percent, 6 percent of GDP. And in India, in the last 20 years, whatever money we have put in bank recapitalization, it is less than 1 percent. So it's not like we are um, putting in a lot of money. Why? This seems like a lot of money for us because India is a poor country, and all these things get a center at, uh, what is attention, right? So that's why. But still, uh, privatization is not a solution. But still, bank has to, what do you say? Uh, uh, what is the bank has to get over the political influences and all those things, right? Banks, bank board bureau and all those things, it will help, right? But this recapitalization was also needed because a private investment has stalled in our economy, right? So that is the thing. Median cost of bank recapitalization, you don't need to worry about it. Mean, median mode, you must have heard in statistics. Even if you have not heard, median means middle path, right? just like, like the median. So you can say that is average, although technically it is not average because average means mean, but still median cost of bank recapitalization also evaluates or means average cost of bank recapitalization. So that is the whole funda. So are you understanding now? This is one point. This is one argument which you can put forward now because generally we talk about privatization of PSBs, but now you also know what are the negative effects of privatization of PSBs and what has happened worldwide, right? Fine. Now let's talk about the next topic that is infrastructure spending, right? It lies under topic 9 infrastructure. Fine. But the thing is, what is the issue? The issue is government is revving up infrastructure spending, which is very necessary, but it is not sufficient. And what is government doing? So central government is planning to spend almost 7 lakh crore rupees to build 83,000. Again, these data are not important. Just try to understand that yeah, government is investing some lakh crores to build 83,677 kilometers of highway travels in mostly the northern and eastern parts of the country by March 2022. Now the thing is, uh, there is a stip estimate that Bharat Mala Pariyojana, which constitute a major component of this plan, could itself create as many as 14.2 crore man days of work directly in addition to permanent jobs after completion. So you are seeing that infrastructure has a domino kind of an effect. Or what do you say? It has a chain effect, right? Where one thing leads to another and lots and lots of jobs are getting developed, right? But the thing is, infrastructure is fine, but only this outlay of 7 lakh crore will not do we have to do a lot of things, right? This will even not attract private investment. For private investment, we have to make things much more clearer to them, right? So that is the whole thing. Now, we have talked about Bharat Mala Pariyojana, which is a part of this infrastructure spending, right? But again, Bharat Mala is what? It is It is a centrally sponsored and funded road and highway project, which is under Ministry of Road and Transport Highway. 
Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, right? Now, Sagar Mala, related to it, but not directly related to this topic. But since we are reading about Bharat Mala, so you can start understand also about Sagar Mala, which can be asked in prelims. So, what is Sagar Mala? It is it is a national water port development, and it is not under Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. It is under Ministry of Shipping. So, understand it. Sagar Mala, Ministry of Shipping, Bharat Mala, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. Important from prelims point of view. So, the thing is, we have talked about yeah. So, man days of work will be generated and whatever whatever but still this is not sufficient there should be a way forward so what is the way forward and why this is not sufficient we'll talk about right now so there are three way forward see the thing is private infra infrastructure companies they are already leading under what is it uh, under aggressive past beats they have in the past they have done aggressive bidding for these infrastructure things and they are reeling because of bad debt right so the thing is and they, they have a what do you say over leverage balance sheets so they will need more clarity to be genuinely interested interested in such projects because government cannot invest on these projects they, they can invest up to a certain extent then private investment will be needed and they are already re reeling under high debt so so these private companies will need more clarity on these projects right so this was the first thing first issue of first way forward more clarity needed to be provided to private companies private infrastructure companies second thing is this is the opportune time for government to bring out a cold storage the blueprint for reviving public private partnership prepared about 2 years ago by a panel headed by former finance secretary vijay kelkar so vijay kelkar he has formed a committee so vijay kelkar committee is related to ppp remember about it or what is it remember it because this can be asked in prelims right vijay kelkar committee on ppp 10 years back vijay kelkar committee was also forming fiscal consolidation but i don't think they will ask you a, what is it Uh, but they can upsc is unpredictable but still remember vijay kelkar committee on ppp and vijay kelkar committee on fiscal consolidation right so again they have uh, what is recommended lots of lots of things two years ago when they have given their uh, committee's recommendation but that is in the back burner so it has to be revived so that is the second way forward right and again the third way forward is 3p india and what is 3p india 3p india is an institute or institution to provide support to uh, or to support yeah to, to provide support to mainstream Uh, mainstreaming PPPs, so they want to promote PPPs. For that, an institution was developed, which was called, or it was in the what is it, planning stage, which was called 3P India. But it's it is it is not it has not yet been created. So the third way forward to revive infrastructure spending is uh, 3P India institution need to be created or need to be created, and land acquisition reforms need attention as well. So again, land acquisition reforms is a what is it? is an achilles heel right so uh, these things land acquisition is a major issue and japan and other uh, countries are also raising concern about it so all these things are the way forward and government has to pay attention to these things only spending will not do government spending can be done up to a certain limit after that we will need private investment and for this these were the three way forward hope you will remember it thank you now let's move on to the next topic but um, because i'm not yet done so i shouldn't be thanks thank you okay so let's move on to the next topic So the next topic is study that is what is the long term solution of crop burning in Punjab? We keep on talking about this that uh, Punjab, uh, what is the farmers are defying and then government is imposing certain things and they are not listening to it. So we have to think about what is the long term solution. As a civil servant, you have to address these issues. Again, this is a topic which can be kept under cropping pattern. Farmers are not burn means farmers are continuously burning because if they don't burn, it will alter their cropping pattern. So that's why it lies under topic for crop and cropping pattern also. It can lie under topic nine energy also. We'll see how and topic twelve environment also because we know it leads to a lot of air pollution, right? So despite the twenty fifteen ban on crop burning, farmers in Punjab continue to set fire to paddy residue to make way for the next crop, right? Paddy is rice. Now the thing is, now there are certain arguments or certain statements given by certain people. Again, you don't need to remember these certain statements, but try to understand what I'm trying to tell you from these statements. So there is one statement by Jaspi Singh Bans, and he is the director of Punjab Agricultural Development. And what he has said, he has said that unless financial assistance is provided by the center for boosting farm mechanization, it is difficult to completely stop stubble burning. So why this statement is and uh, what is important? Because it is giving you a solution. So they are saying that financial assistance by the government or the center, not by the state level, but the center is needed to boost farm mechanization. Right? Until then, we will not see this or not see the end of this stubble burning. Now, what is the statement of a farmer? Now, a farmer in uh, Bharangar, Mohali, which is near Mohali, he has said a certain statement, and his name is Harpreet Singh. Again, not, not needed, but try to understand what he is saying and what you can derive from it. So he has said that if I engage machine or labor, both of which are difficult to find for clearing the paddy straw, it will be time-consuming. 
and it will delay my sowing of wheat and I will have less yield. It's expensive too. So now you're knowing different, different perspectives, right? So they are saying it is time consuming. They are saying that they have to employ the labor, which is money consuming, right? It will delay the sowing of wheat and then they have less wheat. It, it's expensive for them. So there are different, different repercussions, right? So that's why they are continuously, uh, what do you say, doing stubble burning, right? Even defined court orders. So now you're understanding it or you are looking at farmer's perspective also. Okay, so what is the way forward? So the way forward is one of the ways to resolve problem of stubble burning would be by generating power through biomass energy plants. But the issue is there are not enough biomass energy plants in Punjab. So government should promote setting up a biomass power plant. At present, Punjab has seven biomass based plant with installed capacity of 62.5 megawatt, just seven in the whole of Punjab, right? So we need more biomass based plants so that we could generate power through these biomass plants and the stubble could be bought from the farmers, right? So that is the whole thing. So need the major issue, what do you say, the way, major way forward is more biomass power plants, right? And uh, what do you say, a little bit of awareness must be generated among them. But then again, it's a financial issue for them. So you cannot do too much by generating awareness. You have to buy, a center has to buy those stubbles and have to, what do you say, invest them in biomass power plants, right? So that is the way and that should be the way forward. Fine. Now let's talk about India's air pollution crisis, right? And then we'll talk about the three major, major issues. How does it come about? Why does it matter? And what lies ahead? So six run color, color coded. Six means there are six holdings the standards in air quality index, right? Now it has showed that pollution levels have shot up to severe. In single quote, severe on October 20 in Delhi, a sign that air was toxic enough to warrant even healthy to stay inside, right? But in a few hours, the needle eased down to very poor or a level that's typical of Delhi winters and risky to those with underlying respiratory problems. Now, you must have seen uh, the severe, the Delhi's air quality improved from severe to very poor. So that was an improvement. If Delhi's air quality is very poor, it is very, it is an improvement. So you can just imagine the uh, what is extent of air pollution in these high or what do you say, in these fast-paced metropolitan cities, right? Now, how did it come about? What, what is the major cause? of this air pollution, right? See, what happens, winter in North India means a drop in wind speed and high moisture levels from a retreating monsoon that prevents dust and particulate matter from being quickly flushed out. All of us have studied geography, right? So we know that what happens, these are cool air, so these sinks down, and these air, since it sinks down, so they don't get, what do you say, removed from a particular place and they stay at a particular place with the amount of pollution they are carrying. In summer, what happens? Because of the high wind speed and what do you say, the hot air, they, they move up and they go away, right? But that doesn't happen in winter. So that is a major cause of what is air pollution, right? Further, what is the other cause? Further, burning of agricultural stubble, which we have the previous topic. The burning of agricultural stubble in Punjab brings toxic and unburned carbon pest particles into Delhi's atmosphere atmosphere right and cities high emission from cars road dust and industrial waste contribute to high pollution load that rank it among world's most polluted and there's a very important fact what is the fact the fact is no fast growing urban city in our country right they adhere to the or no fast developing uh, what do you say uh, let's let's recap it so no fast growing urban city in india is even close to the who dictated air quality standard so that is the sorry state right and why this whole why this whole air, air pollution thing matters? Why? Because India bears burden of maximum number of air pollution linked deaths in world. And who has said it? It has been said by Lancet. And what is Lancet? Lancet is a weekly peer-reviewed medical journal, and it is one of the world's oldest and best known medical journal. So they have said that India bears burden of maximum number of air pollution linked deaths, deaths in world. And financial cost of such pollution is between 1 and 1.5 percent of GDP of middle income countries. Now, what lies ahead? So, there are main, main, three main things which lies ahead. First, there should be a control on burning of agriculture stubble. Again, the previous issue which we are saying, biomass power plants and all those things. Second is, there should be a clamping down on brick things which generate a lot of amount of heat and a lot of air pollution. And the third is uh, regulation on number of cars in city as it has been done in Singapore. In Singapore, you have to take a permit to if you want to take your vehicle to the road, right? And sometimes those permit takes years, right? So that should be the way forward in our country also because the number of vehicles or two wheelers on, on our, what do you say? Uh, on our cities or cities roads are increasing, continuously increasing without any permit system at all. So there should be a regulation on number of cars in cities. In fact, four wheelers as well as two wheelers, right? So that is the whole thing. Okay, so again, th this was about India's air pollution crisis. Now let's talk about some uh, one-liners. So Kalazar, what is Kalazar? It is also called visceral lesmaniasis, right? And it is caused by a protozoan parasite, lesmania donovani, and the host is sandfly insect. 
Now the next point is GST 7 rate. Contrary to what people think that GST is only 5 rate, that is 0, 5, 12, 18, 28. GST has 7 rates. That is 0, 0 0.25, 3, 5, 12, 18 and 28, right? Again, largest rubber producer, we are not preparing for SSC, so that is not important, but the amount of rubber which Kerala produces humongous. So they are producing 78%, right? So 78% of India's rubber produce production is done in Kerala. And the most important one-liner in this one is Indra. Why? Because Indra is India, India Russia's tri-service exercise and which has been carried out in Vladivostok. And why it is very, very, very important from Kilim's point of view? Because India, it is India's first tri-service exercise with any country. Tri-service means Army, Naval, Air Force, all of them are involved. So it is the, India's first tri-service exercise with any country. That's why it is very, very, very important from Kilim's point of view. So remember Indra, India, Russia, right? Fine. So this is it, GS Mains Paper 3 is done and from next video we will start GS Mains Paper 1 October 2017 and then we will move on to November. Thank you.